On today's video, we are debunking the myth that all a bioinformatician does is sit at their computer and code, code, code away because even though we do code, we do so many other things. And today's video is going to explain to you all the other key components of a bioinformatics job that isn't the actual coding. If you're new here, hi guys, my name is Georgia. I'm a bioinformatician currently working in academia and I love my job so, 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 so much. And the reason why I love it is because it combines coding with so many other things that I enjoy. So we talk about coding a lot. So let's talk about the other things that are really important in a bioinformatics role. So firstly, just because you are a bioinformatician, that does not mean that you no longer have to read academic papers. You're a bioinformatician, so you're working with biological data. So you need to be staying up to date on the literature in your certain biological domain, whether that's scanning bio archive for the latest preprints, whether that's combing through doing literature reviews on your chosen subject, you need to be aware of what's being published in your field in that domain because even though you're not in the nitty gritty academic space you're still contributing to the wider research effort and you need to understand how your analysis that you're doing fits into the global picture so that you can adjust what you're doing to improve the knowledge in the field otherwise you're just going to take yourself down rabbit holes that don't fit into the wider sphere. Staying up to date on academic papers, this goes for biological papers but also computational papers. When people are publishing new tools, new pipelines, often now people put these in papers and release these online so you need to be up to date and constantly reading literature on the new tools and techniques that are going on in bioinformatics our field evolves so 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 quickly so constantly knowing what's being published is so key because nine times out of ten you could go away and start building something but it turns out someone else has already built that they've open sourced it and they've published it so why waste your time doing it yourself when you can a use theirs and it's better for you and b give them feedback on how their tool worked for you and then they can improve it so that's what you need to be doing as well as the actual coding is the reading the next thing we do as bioinformaticians is we attend events so the main event that's kind of more centered to bioinformaticians is a hackathon so i don't think i've mentioned hackathons on this channel yet but a hackathon <laughs> is essentially it might be a one day or maybe two day or even five day event where data scientists and bioinformaticians get in a room together and they hack out the solution to a biological problem they are literally so 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 fun and they're a really great thing to do and it's literally nuts because you can make so much progress in such a short amount of time on this certain project it's really really cool so hackathons can happen independently organized within your institute so someone could just say hey i want to do a hackathon and like bring 10 people together for a couple of days to solve a problem or it could be a more formal thing so you could have a institute wide hackathon where people bring biological problems and then you know internal and external data scientists and bioinformaticians come in team up and then work to solve those problems or they can be more focused on community development of certain tools so you might have a certain tool or package and the people running that package development maintenance they might run a hackathon to come up with new features and you know solve existing problems so it's really really great to get involved with these as soon as you are able to proficiently code and you have the opportunity to because even if you can't contribute much when your early career just being in that environment you learn so so much because you'll be surrounded by really proficient people and everyone just is there to help one another so going to hackathons is really cool and i know it kind of counts as coding but it's like attending an event that's not just you coding like as part of your normal day job and then another event kind of thing that you do is you still do go to conferences guys i know that some bioinformaticians don't go to conferences but in the history of places where i've been before it's very normal if you've you know created a pipeline or created some analyses and been working on a project you can go and 
you know, present that in a poster at a conference, or you can just go and attend a conference to learn about things in the field. And I think a really key thing is it is up to you to go and find these conferences and then suggest them to your managers, because often they might not know what's going on in the field of computational biology like you do. Make sure you find really cool events and ask if you can go to them, because they're just a really great way of networking, talking to people, understanding your wider field rather than just a little tiny bit that you work on. Another one of my favourite things about being a bioinformatician that's not coding is the translational communication. So as a bioinformatician, we know that we sit at the intersection between biology, statistics and computer science. However, that means that you're going to be working with computer scientists, so maybe kind of more IT people who run the HPC clusters and all sorts. And you'll be working with wet lab biologists. And you might be working with, you know, specific statisticians. So when you sit at this intersection of these specialised domains, you are a translational communicator. So what I mean by this is, Someone who is a wet lab biologist can come to you with a hypothesis, a question, and it's up to you to be able to process that, translate it into an analytical plan, and then proceed to do things that answer their question. So it's really important to be able to understand what people are actually asking of you and transform that into a set of steps to actually action rather than just like I'm interested in this certain thing if this does this we get to translate that into the analytical steps to figure that problem out and then when you've then done your analytical steps to figure said problem out you've then got to be able to talk about the analysis that you've done in a way that someone who isn't bioinformatically trained can understand and I really love talking to people and it's really fulfilling to be able to like sit at this intersection and and marry up kind of different people's approaches and languages because everyone has a specific language depending on their background of training and I think a bioinformatician is someone that has to be able to understand all of those languages and then communicate effectively across teams. Love the communication side of being a bioinformatician and I think this is also why just because you've got a bioinformatics masters doesn't mean you get the role because we have to be fantastic communicators. You have to be able to distill your really complex analytical problem into a narrative that someone else can understand that's not bioinformatically trained without being condescending or missing out details and being able to have a really coherent conversation. Being a great communicator is very important. And finally, another thing we do as bioinformaticians is we present. So whether this is at a regular team meeting where you present your work that you've been doing, whether it's more a journal club style, so you present about a paper that you've read, whether this is a Zoom online webinar that you might give to people about what you're doing. Also going to conferences, hopefully you get to then present your work in front of people at a conference. There's just loads of reasons why we present in bioinformatics. Additionally, in bioinformatics, we often go on training courses. So you might have to present what you're doing at your training course. It's a really important skill in bioinformatics to be able to present to people. So do not just think that you get to sit there behind your computer and not talk to anyone because that is not the case. Presenting is very, very key in bioinformatics. And finally, the last thing you do as a bioinformatician, which is really important, is you have to teach people. So as you rise up the ranks in bioinformatics, there'll be people that come in at a more junior level and you'll have to teach them how to do the things that you know how to do. If you've been a good little bioinformatician, then you've documented everything very well and you can teach people easily how to do the things you've done. Teaching and mentoring is something that you will definitely be doing in your role. So again, having that really great communication skills and being able to be patient, being able to be thorough and being able to be effective at teaching is really important, especially because people always come into bioinformatics from really different areas. You might have a physicist or a computer scientist or a biologist, you know, we've all picked up different bits of skills along the way. So whenever you get into a team of bioinformaticians, you're all just going to be helping each other improve your bioinformatics skill sets. Being able to teach and being able to be taught is one of the key, key things aside from coding for a bioinformatics role. All right, guys, that is everything for today. So I hope that you have found these things really important and just make sure you remember that 
Coding is not everything when it comes to being a bioinformatician. It's the key requirement to do our job, but doing your job effectively and well means encompassing all of these other attributes. And they're fun, right? It means you're not just a little hermit at your desk. You get to go and run teaching courses and go to conferences and attend hackathons where you can be coding with other coders in a sweaty little room. So yeah, there's loads more to it than just coding. So I'm really glad that you guys know that now. Thank you so much for listening. If you really want to see some more content along this theme, subscribe to my channel, Genomics of Georgia, and I will see you again on another video. Bye.